This is an important session of our workshop series. So pay close attention as we explore ECS task definitions in detail, which essentially act as a blueprint for your containerized application. A task definition is a text file, typically in JSON format, that outlines various parameters of your application such as CPU, memory, etc. And it specifies details for one or more containers that collectively make up your application. It defines how your application should run and behave in the ECS environment. When you include multiple container images within a single task, it's important to understand that these containers will all run on the same underlying instance. This co-location allows for efficient use of resources and easy communication between containers if needed. Each task definition can specify one or more container definitions that include information about the containers, including image source, container port, mount volumes, and more. Use each task definition family for only one business purpose. Grouping different types of application containers in the same task definition can lead to scalability and management challenges. By segregating containers by their business function in separate task definitions, you gain the ability to scale these containers independently. Amazon ECS task definitions for AWS Fargate require that network mode is set to AWS VPC. The AWS VPC network mode provides each task with its own elastic network interface and the IP address. By assigning a separate ENI to each task, AWS VPC ensures that each task has a distinct network identity, thereby providing a way to apply specific network security and access controls for each task. Each ENI is assigned a private IP address from the subnet in which the task is running. That means that each task gets its own private IP address within your VPC. For tasks running on AWS Fargate, the task definitions require you to explicitly specify both CPU and memory configurations at the task level. Specifying CPU and memory at the task level ensures that each task has the necessary resources allocated to it for optimal performance. By configuring these values, you can control the performance characteristics of the containers in your task. Insufficient resources can lead to slow performance or even failures while over-provisioning can result in unnecessary cost. AWS Fargate offers various task sizes, which are combinations of CPU and memory configurations. In AWS Fargate deployments, the task execution role is a critical component that facilitates secure interaction with other AWS services. It enables ECS container and Fargate agents to make AWS API calls on behalf of your application. The task execution role enables your Fargate tasks to securely pull container images from an Amazon ECR. It also allows Fargate tasks to send container logs to Amazon CloudWatch logs. ECS supports various log drivers as part of the log configuration in the task definition. Specifically, ECS for Fargate supports the AWS logs, Splunk, and AWS FireLens log drivers. AWS is responsible for maintaining the underlying infrastructure for AWS Fargate. AWS determines when a platform version revision needs to be replaced with a new one. This is known as task retirement. There are a number of reasons why a revision may need to be retired, including security vulnerabilities. When a revision is retired, a new task is started first before a task is stopped. Let's go ahead and define a task definition for our web server and run it. First, let's go to our ECS cluster dashboard and click on the task definition in the left menu. This will open the task definition dashboard where we can see all our task definitions. Currently we have none. So let's create our first task definition by clicking on the create task definition button. Once the create task definition wizard opens, we can give a name to our task definition. Select the launch type, which will be Fargate for this workshop. 
We also have the option to select various operating systems and or hardware architectures. For Fargate, networking mode will always be AWS VPC. For task size, we have several options of CPU and memory combinations to choose from. We have to either select an existing task execution role or create a new one. Now we can specify our container definition, give our container a name and specify the location it will be downloaded from. In our case, the container image is hosted in ECR. So let's go ahead and copy the URI of our image and paste it here. We can also specify the container port, which in our case will be port 80. We can specify resource allocation for our container. Since we have only one container, we specify all the task resources available for our container. After that, we can click create button at the bottom. This will create a task definition, but won't launch anything. We can also review and make changes to the JSON file instead of doing it in the console. To test our task definition, we can run it as a single task by clicking on deploy dropdown and selecting run task option. We have to select the cluster, VPC and subnet where to launch this task and the security group for traffic control. For now, just select the public subnet so that we can get a public IP address to test our web server. Once done, click on create. After a while, the task status will change from provisioning to running. Let's get the IP address assigned to our task and open it in our browser window. As we can see, our web server is running and responding to HTTP requests. That's all for today. See you all in the next session.